All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers. Those that came and said they were Jesus, they weren't him. They were thieves and robbers. But the sheep, they did not hear them. I am the door. Again, he says this. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Praise God for the pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come, Jesus said, that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. If you're thankful for the Good Shepherd this morning, would you personally make your songs this morning to him? Forget who's beside you and give him all glory and all praise and honor yeah. because he loves you. Oh, Amen. he does. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Our hymn of the day is number 227.
before you asked me to do that for you. As well as myself. We wouldn't have made it through without God. No way possible would we ever made it through without it. I look at Mr. Scott right here. Ninety-five years young. Up here singing for the glory of God and praising God.
But if you would, turn to John chapter 12 in your Bibles, and we'll, we'll put it up here on the overhead. And don't let this overhead discourage you from reading your Bible or looking in your own Bible, because these, these scriptures, when, when I give them or go over them, it's a good idea for you to, to go back home and, and to read it and, and to look them up and see what God may, may bring out to you in those particular scriptures or, or the message. You know, when we study the book of Acts, that's one of the things that, that Paul learned when he went into Macedonia, that they didn't just take his word for it. When he preached the scriptures to them, they actually went and looked in the scriptures to make sure Paul was preaching the right thing. In John chapter 12, I'm going to start at verse 1 and go down to verse 11. Now, keep in mind, we're, the last thing that we saw him do, he was with him when he was at the tomb of Lazarus. And Lazarus had been there, of course, four days, and Christ called him out of the tomb and brought him back to life. And we said at that moment we understood where the conflict came into play between him and and the Jews, because they were so afraid that when everybody began to see this miracle or hear this miracle that Christ had done, that the majority of the Jewish nation would follow after him. And their fear was that once that happened, then the control that they had as a, as a religious government, the Sanhedrin, that it would disperse, it would lose its power and once that began to happen, then the Romans would simply step in and they would dissolve the deal that they had with the Jews or the fact that they just let them follow their religion. So if everybody went after Christ, it posed a big problem for the religious system. And that was one of their major concerns. Well, when he left there, which wasn't far, I told you there was a ford in the river that he came to where John had baptized. He was going around Samaria because they wouldn't let him go into there. And then he ends up, he ends up at Bethany. So this is where we're going to pick this up. Chapter 12, verse 1. And then John tells us that six days before the Passover, it's important to, to get the time frame, six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany. And that's where Lazarus, who had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. That's where Lazarus and Mary Martha lived. So there they made him a supper. And Martha served, but Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. And then Mary, Martha's sister, Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard. And she anointed the feet of Jesus, and she wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. But then one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, who happened to be Simon's son, the one that would end up betraying him, Judas said, why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii? That, that's the street value. And given to the poor. And then John tells us, he said, now this he said, not that he really cared for the poor. He said that but because he was a thief and he had the money box. So, and he used to take money from what was put in the box. But now listen to what Jesus said when he said that. He said, let her alone. She has kept this for the day of my burial. For the poor you have with you always. But me, you do not have all lives. And John said, now a great many of the Jews knew that he was there, and they came. And they didn't come just for Jesus' sake only, but they, but that they might also see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priests, they plotted to put Lazarus to death also. Because on account of him, many of the Jews went away and believed in Jesus. And the plot thickens for the Jews, doesn't it? 
now they, they not only after Christ, but now they say, we got to get rid of Lazarus too. Stretch your hands this way and pray for me. Father, we thank you today that we're able to gather in this church in this century to praise you and worship you and glorify you today. Lord, as we have worshipped in song and giving, now comes the time we worship through your word. So I pray just as you gave this to, to your evangelists, to John and Matthew and Mark and Luke and all those who gave us the scriptures, I pray, Lord, that you open it up in our hearts and not just in our minds so that we might be better disciples and that we might be effective evangelists as we go into the fields which are white for harvest. And we'll thank you, Jesus, in your wonderful name. I ask it by faith, and all would say we love you, Lord. Amen, amen and amen. Well, now Matthew records part of this too, records some of this that happened as well. Let me, let me make this statement so that it might clarify when you go back and read that in Matthew chapter 26. Because, see, there was really only one gospel. And there was four evangelists who reported the things that Jesus did. But each of the evangelists saw maybe something different than the other one did at a particular event or a particular happening. There was no controversy between what they had written, even though it's not word for word and account for account. And the reason for that is, if Matthew had wrote this word for word as John had wrote it, then it would be easy for someone to say, well, they just copied one another. But they did not do that. Each of them were there, each of them witnessed what happened, and each of them wrote an account about it. Matthew tells us that this was a celebration supper for Jesus, just as John does. And he tells us it was held at Simon, who was the leper that Christ had healed. It was held at his house. See, we sometimes think because Martha served and Mary anointed him and Lazarus was at the table, we think it was at their house. But, but don't read anything into that. Matthew said it was at Simon's house. Simon the leper, they were at his house. Martha still served. And Mary is still the one who anointed his feet. But it was held at that particular house in Bethany. And in what we see happening here as they're giving this big celebration service for Jesus because of what he has done for Lazarus. I told you last week, you know that when he came out of that grave, it was party time. You know that it was a big, so they just had, they just had an official party for him to recognize this miracle that he had done. And just like you and I, if it was within our area and we had heard this, and we would want to see Lazarus too. We would want to see this man that had been dead for four days because everybody didn't know him. They wanted to see him, the one that Jesus had brought back from the dead. So this was a this was a planned supper. It was a scheduled stop on the way to the cross. Now, when we get there, we will understand why he did all the things that he did before he actually went to the cross. Now, the key character in our story today, the key character at this, at this table, at this festival, is a man named Judas. And although Judas was Simon's son, he was not the son of Simon the leper, but although he was the son of Simon, when Mary came in, Matthew said that she not only anointed his feet and wiped with her hair as John did, Matthew says she anointed his head with the oil too. So she, she anointed him completely with this oil, with this spikenard. If you look up what spikenard is, it came from a plant, the plant which was nard. And it was a very, very odorous plant. It was, it was high dollar perfume. Back in them days, it, it wouldn't it wouldn't like it for us on Green Acres where you could buy a fifty-five gallon drum of perfume for three dollars at Sam's store. This was high dollar stuff. I mean, this was this was the best of the best. And John John put the value of that on what Judas said as three hundred denarii. That 
was almost a year's wages. A year's wages for this oil. And then Judas focused on the oil and not on the one who it was put on. And when it would have happened, when she had anointed in the fragrance, filled the whole house, it wouldn't have mattered where you were in the house. You would have knew something had happened. And that perfume had just, had just filled the whole room. Isn't it good that Christ's presence does that? Paul, Paul talked about that to the Corinthians. He said, you know, to those who, who are perishing, those of us who are saved, we have a fragrance of death about us. And what he meant was, when we're in the presence of unbelievers, then they know that they're unbelievers, and there is a fragrance of death that comes from not being saved. But he said, yet to others, yet to others we are the fragrance of which would be a salvation. In other words, they, they are drawn to us. We say it this way, our spirit bears witness with them. So fragrance is, is an important detail here. And it filled that whole house. And then the master character here met Mr. Judas, who was motivated by greed, according to John. Now, John was with them. He knew Judas. They knew what he did. And he would, he would take from the box. Now, you know, Jesus made an example of him once when, when they were all wanting to know who was the best of the best. And Jesus told the disciples, he said, did I not choose all of you and one of you was a devil? Now, he chose Judas knowing what was going to happen because that was the plan. So he knew who Judas was and John knew who he was and he said he wasn't really worried about about the oil or he wasn't worried about what had happened but he saw all the money that was wasted according to him by what was put on Christ and this is this is the point that Matthew draws us to that led Judas to his betrayal and the reason the reason he wanted revenge on Christ from this is because Jesus singled him out when he said what he did now, when he said we could have taken this and we could have sold it and we could have given money to the poor. Now, doesn't that sound noble? That sounds like a noble cause to me. Well, yeah, we could have probably sold that and give the money to the poor. And, but then Jesus humiliated him in front of everybody there by just simply saying, let her alone. Leave her alone. Because what she has done, she has done for my burial. Because see, in, in, in a week, this was six days before the Passover, so less than seven days, he would be crucified and he would be buried. He knew he was going there. She may have not knew that. Mary may have not known what it was. Mary gave him that gift because of the gift he had given her in bringing her brother back from the dead. This was the most expensive thing, no doubt, that Mary had. And she wanted to give it to Jesus because of what he had done for them by raising their dead brother. Now, what would you give Jesus to raise your dead loved one and bring them back to you? And, and it, was, it was a time of celebration, but Judas didn't see it that way. And Christ pointed that out, and he said, leave her alone. And Matthew said, he also said, whenever the gospel is preached, what she has done will be preached also. It will be as a memorial to her that she gave what she owed or what she had unto Jesus because she was so faithful of what he had done for her. And because Christ had called him out, on this particular thing, Matthew tells us in his gospel that the next thing that Judas did is he went to the Jews and he sought what they would give him to turn Christ over to them. So at that point, Judas had already decided, I'm going to side with these Jews and get rid of this guy. And, and see, Satan saw that. He understood that. He He's been an enemy of Jesus all along and always will be. And Satan will use whoever he can use against Christ. It doesn't make any difference to him if you're how close you are to Christ. It doesn't make any difference 
because Judah was one of the gang. It didn't matter to Satan. When he saw Judas think, think that, well, I've got to find a way to betray, at that moment he made his move. And he went to the Jews. Because, see, John tells us that the Jews knew that he was there. They knew they was having this big party. And they all went to Bethany to the party because they were going to Jerusalem too for Passover. And they all went to this house, to Simon the leper's house, to where this big party was. And when they saw that Lazarus was there, then the chief priest said, we're going to have to kill him too. We're going to have to kill Lazarus too because, listen, if we kill Jesus, Lazarus is still going to go out and run that mouth. Lazarus is going to be the one that's going to go out and tell everybody, I'm the one who was dead for four days. I'm the one who was raised from the dead. So they said, we're going to have to get both of them. That may have been where the mafia started. So I'm not sure. But anyway, they knew they were going to have to put a hit man on Lazarus. Because he also, he also carried the testimony of what Christ had done. And he, he knew, Lazarus knew, that he was going to be targeted, no doubt, when Judas had did what he did to Christ. So they said, he's living proof of the miracle of what Jesus has done. So he too has got to be killed. Now, the anointing happened in, in open public. It was public before the Jews. They had, you know, when, when they were there, it's not like, well, they just happened to show up. They was there when Mary anointed him. They was there when the perfume filled the fragrance of the house. They knew everything that was happening at that point. And no doubt they had heard what Jesus had said. And that anointing prophesied his burial, which therefore prophesied his death. So on the way to the cross, he, he didn't quit ministering. He didn't quit doing what he came to do, even though that was the final end of the plan of salvation that God had already put in place. God needed him to make this stop. God needed him to be anointed by Mary. God needed him to be there with Lazarus, the one whom he had raised from the dead. Because they were the two characters that the chief priests were focused on. We have got to get rid of both of them. we got to get rid of both of them. Because both of them, Jesus is the one that did it. Lazarus is the living proof of this miracle. So their thinking was simple. You get rid of Jesus, you get rid of the witness, then there's no one to prove that what he did really happened. But it just didn't happen that way. It didn't happen that way because God had another plan. Now, for you and I, we'd say, well, why is it important for us to know that this, that this took place? Because it's important for us to know when we focus on what Judas did and we focus on what Mary did. When we got the two characters with Christ at that same place, who observed the same miracle, who knew Lazarus to be the one who was raised from the dead, one of them gave all that she had, and the most important thing to her, she gave it unto Christ as a gift, as sacrifice, as worship unto him, not knowing that it would be for his burial. And then the other one, Judas, could care less about worshiping Christ. Because he worshipped the money box. Yep. He wasn't interested in Christ. He was worried about how much money he could have made off of that deal. But isn't that the way it is in the world today? Don't Jesus' name get thrown around a whole lot by people who really don't care nothing about him, but they care about the money that, that comes because they throw his name around, but because they use the gospel as a means to do that. So there's, there's 20 sermons in that one supper, but this was done openly and publicly so that you and I could see 
that going down to the final hours, going down to the final days of the cross, that Jesus was still being Jesus. He, he, never, he never turned on Judas because he had betrayed him. He never took it out on the Jews because they were plotting to kill him. All of this was in the plan, and he knew that it was in the plan. But he did it anyway. That's why the writer of Hebrews said he went to the cross. He endured the cross for the joy that was set before him. Amen. That's what he had planned. That's what he was going to do. And there was nothing that was going to stop that. Even though the Jews now were going to kill him and were going to kill Lazarus, it never happened. It never happened because the cross was in the plan and nothing was going to keep Christ from that cross. So that's why they had the party to celebrate Lazarus is for those that you would, you would be able to see, we would be able to see the difference between those who gave Everything that we have and give it all under Christ. And I'm not talking materially, I'm talking about spirituality that we don't see as the chief priest did and we don't see as Judas did, but we see it from the perspective of Mary. And we see it from the perspective of Martha, who was serving the dinner, and Mary, who did the anointing. Now, I don't know about you, but I'd rather be known as one who anointed Christ and not one who betrayed him. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That's just me. I'd rather be in that category. I'd rather be in that category when it comes down to it. So this is, the, is if we would say the last stop, now he, he's going to do a lot of teaching in, in these next five days that leads up to the Passover. This was six days before. Now, John and Matthew, they will pick it up. We will pick it up next week on Palm Sunday. We will pick up when he enters into Jerusalem. And, of course, we know what happens from there. So I, I'm going to ask the musicians, you guys, to come at this time. And we're going to close and we're going to, we're going to have prayer. And as always, it, it doesn't, maybe, maybe, I don't, maybe I don't speak on what the need is that maybe you have today in, in listening to the songs and as Charles had testified and as Ruth had testified, I think at some point all of us have storms. Uh, I remember asking a guy one time in the cafeteria at Paul Lowe, I said, how's it going, Mike? And he said, I'm going to tell you how my life is, Mike. He said, I'm, I'm either in a storm or I've just come out of a storm or I'm heading into a storm. And you think, what a sad life. No, that's life. That's life 101 because that's the way, that's the way it happens. Sometimes we're, we're on dry land. Sometimes we're in a boat fighting. And, and all we need to know is what the sinners have sung and what you have sung and what the Bible has said. Bring our burdens to the Lord and leave them there. Leave them there. I like what Charles said. Don't take them with you. Don't take them. That's the easy thing to do. I find sometimes that I'll pray about things, but, but still, I have, now listen, Pentecostal preachers don't worry. We get concerned about things, but I still find, I still find that that happens sometimes. It's that faith, it's that faith that we know not only that, that God can and the faith that he will, but the sovereignty and the solemnness of the fact, even if he doesn't, as Job said, even if he slay me, I will still see my Redeemer. So I'm going to ask you to stand. Let's remember to pray for Brother Randall. Talk to him this morning. Text him. He's doing well. He said he was still a little sore from the surgery. And pray for Myra Floyd's family, Myra Atkinson's family. The service is going to be here Tuesday night. Viewing starts at 5, and the funeral will be at 7. It will be here at the church. You want to pray for somebody this morning, or if you have a need, or, or maybe, maybe you want to be one who anoints Jesus. Maybe you would like to be a Mary, and you think, you know, if only, if only he knew how much that I love him. Well, he does, he does, but, but it's always good to show it in. It's always good to show it. So I'm going to ask those of you that will, if you will come, and we can pray together.
together. We will pray for our prayer request. We will pray for those who we have on our list. And we will pray for you. If there's anything that, that you particularly need or a particular prayer request that you have because prayer is what James is saying. Jack says it is the prayer that does it. And it's not, it's not just who that's praying, but it's the fact that it is the prayer that Christ has to pray. Once you come and pray with us and say, well, I, I really don't really don't like to come forward, well, that's okay. You pray right when you are asked, because God listens to you right there just as well. So you can pray with us as we come together here and pray. Christine.
praying for our congregation. We'll have a dismissal prayer. Father, we come in the name of Jesus right now. We lift up all these prayer requests and all these needs of you. We know that you know the needs that are on our hearts and the people that we know who need a touch from you. We know those who, who need to be saved. We all have those in our family who need to come to you. So we join together as a family of believers and just ask you, Holy Spirit, to to just speak to them, speak to their hearts, draw them into a relationship with Christ, just like you did us. Now, Lord, as we go forth in this place, may we go in your name. And just as we have, we have heard today about the fragrance of that perfume that filled that house, Father, may our fragrance of you fill the world in which we go into. We'll give you the thanks and praise for it. In your name, Jesus. And say it by faith. All we love you say thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. God bless you. Have a great day in the Lord.